Hello. 87. Evening, us again. This is number 87 yeah. of a Touchline Ramp what podcast. What are we talking about this week? This week we're going to be talking, we're going to be looking ahead to the Europa League final, because that's, you know, okay, damn big, isn't it? Um, we're going to look back on Man City and Pep and their domestic treble. Um, we're gonna move. We're gonna do. We're gonna redo. We're redo this week. We're gonna jump on board the Trans European Express. Yeah, no, we haven't done that in a while. Romantic, so I'm really it? looking forward to this. We're going to the Trans European. Going Express. into Europe. We're gonna it's go Europe to, related. Yeah. we love Europe. We on do this podcast. We enjoy Europe a lot. So we're gonna go. We there. want more of it. Yeah, we're gonna remain there for a little Ooh. bit while we go through Italy to look at Syria. Mm. Uh, there's some big managerial changes and players leaving clubs. We're gonna then. Can we go to Spain. We're gonna pop to Spain uh-huh. because we've got Zidane versus Gareth Bale. Ajax uh, completed the domestic double and yeah. the celebrations that happened. We're gonna discuss Ajax. What can a they keep bit. hold of? Well, yeah, and we're gonna look at you know what players can they with that squad fall apart. And then we're gonna do also we're gonna talk the very very impressive Leon Ladies side oh. who deserve a huge mention this week. Um, so that's this week. Hopefully. You'll stick around to hear all of that that we just described to you. You should. We know what we're doing. Don't we, Skin? The number you have dialed has been changed. We're going to the Europa League final, which is happening next Wednesday. Oh, okay. So we won't be. Uh, we will be recording when it's on next week. So we're previewing it now ahead of it. It's a good old game, this Arsenal Chelsea. The... I can't wait. I think it's a really good game. It's it's almost been overlooked, didn't it? Well, almost. It's definitely been overlooked because of how dramatic the two semi finals were for the Champions League. But they were madness, weren't they? Those two results to get two English clubs in the Champions League final was madness. So yep. this Europa League has almost been overlooked. What's been overlooked is how good and clinical Arsenal have been in that. I mean, they brushed aside Napoli yep. in this competition. And Valencia. And Valencia, like they've done, they've done amazing things in this competition. Is this the best quality the Premier League has ever shown? Because I was thinking about this. I was pondering this recently. I was saying like. It's going to bring that quality, high class of play. That Man City City side is just going to remain. Nothing's going to break that. No, no exactly. That. That. They're, they're, and Pep's going, to, <clears throat> Pep's going to remain. And you've got like high quality, high caliber uh, managers and and players all competing to get into it. Right. Now. The thing that you've got coming up is with this game. If we take it back to the Europa League final is that what you've got is actually two clubs that have, I would say, you suggest that this elevates English football. Watching English football very closely, I think what this highlights is that two sides that have been brushed aside in the league and and put under enormous pressure in the league yep. with two new managers, like Allegri was put under an enormous amount of pressure. Maurizio Sarri is put under more. And they're battling. And on their league form, you would say that they've been mediocre both sides I'd argue in the league compared to their usual standards uh, um, it's building them it's building but yeah it's building it up so it's actually a massively important game like there was that huge rumour during the rounds wasn't there that um, Sari's actually may be made bet in favourite um, for the Juventus job yeah that's that's circulating now yes yeah, so to... Sari is the bet in favourite to take over at Juventus we, we'll go to it in a bit but what we'll I'm suggesting that. is that they've actually They've actually had all right seasons, these two clubs. But I think it just elevates that. I don't think it necessarily is good enough to elevate them on a European like, platform. Without these two you, finals going ahead, you're still debating whether. I just don't. I think to that, I, that, that, my word, we it, can't make this a. Let's, we can, let's go. Well, look, we haven't even gone to Europe yet. Let's go to Europe. We'll let's go, go to no, Europe. No, no, let's go to, I like to go to Europe now. No, hang on. I want to discuss one thing is what I would say is that. This season, if we briefly talk about where they finished in the league, yeah, this season, my worry is that it's actually shown that the league isn't that competitive. Because without Liverpool this season, the league looks like League uh, Like, it, it, it is so lopsided. And yes. Arsenal and Chelsea have suffered a lot from that. 
So have Man United, but they would keep it Arsenal Chelsea now because of the game. Arsenal and Chelsea have suffered a lot from that this season. They just haven't been good enough. But they've still managed to have credible performances in the Europa League and get to the final. It's a fascinating game. I think they get a lot of stature because of the managers they have and the, the type of players that they can pull in. Look, Allegri did a fantastic job at coming in and to having a better transition from a legendary manager than Manchester United ever managed with David Moyes. He's done really well this year. He's done he's an amazing job at Arsenal. What this game meet signifies to them is if they win, it means that they're in the Champions League. So we all know how important that is to Arsenal Football Club. And this big Yeah, they so they can get into the that's that's, that's a, a large amount. It is. They they can get into the Champions League by winning this. So they then that means that Allegri you gets thought even about more, this a lot, haven't Yeah. Allegri gets even more money Wolves. than to put the funds in to the club. Because this is the thing, Wolves will strengthen a lot. Wolves I think are a bigger threat to the top four than people realise. Have you written all this down like on, on your in, I've got in it spare all. room, all like on the walls, I've got like in your cell? Yeah, so I think that's how important this game is to Arsenal, they win. But to Chelsea, it's important on a different scale. Yes, they can get in the Champions League, but they're in it anyway Yeah. through the league. So their importance on this is all coming, the pressure's all coming from the, the playing staff. Because they don't know if Sari's going to be there. Hazard's they don't going. know if Hazard's going to be there. Go. The pressure on Chelsea Football Club right now is ginormous. I think this game is one of, is the, the more interesting of the European finals. I can't wait to see it because Whoever you don't loses, know. He's under extraordinary pressure next season. Yeah, I think if, Sari will remain least, because he's in demand right now. Uh, Emery w- is, is going to be there given in another his, season. G- Emery's going to give me one more season. I oh, look. Uh, uh, I want him to stay. Oh, yeah, I keep saying Allegri. Um, Unai Emery will be there. Ne- he will be there next season, regardless of the result of this. He will be. He's done an amazing job, Emery. Um, Sari, I hope, gets given another season. I think he will because... I think it hinges on this game, man. I do really do. It's If it was any other football team, I would say no. But it's Chelsea. And we all know what Chelsea are like with their managers. I think this is and uh, shout out please shout out the Gormley Saurus wants Sari gone and the Gormley Ooh, Saur- yeah he okay, wants Gormley Sari Saurus. gone he even posted a picture of him holding up a certain finger outside Sari's office when he was at the Chelsea like ground that's how much he wants him gone and the Gormley Saurus mm. is never wrong with Chelsea managers he's like the, he's, he is he's like death himself Right, well, we've right, gone really, off. No, we haven't. We've gone. Yeah. We've talked very much about how Arsenal have played, how Chelsea have played. Okay, it's a very interesting yes. European final. We've talked way more about this game than we needed to, okay. and it's it's been fun times. I enjoyed that. Who yeah. do you think will win? Let's leave it as a. Oh, like I want Arsenal to. Okay, just you want Arsenal to to turn up. You want Arsenal to win because obviously you're an Arsenal fan. I actually want Arsenal to win because. I think it means then the money that Unai Emery was given this season, and he was given a good amount to rebuild that team a certain level. There's more rebuilding needed at Arsenal, especially in the back. At the, in the back, a lot of change. If he gets given that Champions League money, Arsenal could get some very interesting players next season. That is what, yeah, and I think that, they could, that, get could, be, very that could be the spot. difference. I personally think the pressure is on Chelsea way more than Arsenal. I think Arsenal will win. I really do. I think there's more pressure on Arsenal. Way more pressure on Arsenal. No, I think because they're settled. They're not getting. What and they just accept any? Ah, no, because they're not in. They're not in. No, they're more. The pressure's on Chelsea more because Arsenal know that even if they don't win this, their manager isn't going to get the sack. They're not going to lose their star player. Chelsea could win this final, still lose the manager because they could still sack him because it's Chelsea, and they could lose Eden, Eden Hazard, and they can't buy anyone for a year. Like the pressure on Chelsea to get this result is massive. I still th- yeah, but uh, there's no changes. Do you think right, if, we if, can leave okay, it there? Okay, we, so if, too if, long. if Chelsea don't win, do you feel like Sarri's going to walk? No, I think they'll sack him. Yeah, so you think he'll go? He'll go. That will, I don't. If if Arsenal lose, Emery won't get the sack. All right, I want to revisit this and see what actually okay. happens. Because Emery will not get the sack if Arsenal lose it. But Chelsea would sack Sarri if he lost it. I just it's want Chelsea. Arsenal to win this so much. I think they will. <laughs> Unai Energy. Yeah, Man City, the juggernaut rolled on. Mm-hmm. 
Even you're a fan now. Well, yeah, I am. Um, can I ask a question? Play. It's a little bit controversial, of you can. so stick with me. Okay. You know the topic of um, the financial allegations currently at Man City? Mm hmm. No one, they asked Pep about it because Roberto Mancini has come out and said, well, some of my paychecks weren't even from the club. They were just from a like a, a foreign account. Does so, that surprise you? No, but it's a massive accusation that he's made that the club were the only people paying him. They, Pep Guardiola got asked this. Have you ever had these things? And I think it's a fair and just... And he went, he went, he lost it a little bit and was just like, I'm sat here after winning three trophies and you're asking me about my money, uh, money issues. But I thought it's a fair question in a press conference. What do you think? Is Pep right to be like annoyed saying, why are you asking me about finances of this club when I've just won the FA Cup? It's ballsy. Yeah. Uh, but... I don't know. Saying that, if the timing's not there and that's your one shot, yeah, exactly. you're, you're not going to well, throw away your shot. Not this, but... More credit so, to Man City, that's what no, you Man City, I think, Yeah, I think Man City have done a really good job. Pep Guardiola, media savvy, knows he's... exactly what he's doing, meticulous. Do you know that cardigan? A, blo a blooming nice you know that guy. that cardigan that he the wears? The jumper. It's a cardi. Mm. It's a cardigan with a hood. It costs something like four grand. Mm. You're not understanding. I that. Yeah, but do, do you know why that is? Because it's an expensive car to get. No. <laughs> Do you know why that is? Because his wife does the clothing line, and so when he wears it, then she gets gets it. Uh, That's how things rotate. Well, see, it's clever just like, that, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I just it's dark. Did you were you aware of that? No, I prefer. I sometimes now, I look. Sometimes that, I will look back more and look. Yeah, but it mm. still makes me long for the days of Barry Fry a little bit, thinking stuff like that goes on. But he would do the same. Yeah, but he probably had a line of sheepskin jackets. Barry Fry would have now if he was involved in football. Now he'd have everything. Look, Barry Fry deserved to be in this generation of football owners. He'd have had a right laugh. Um, what what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> right. What were we talking okay. about? Okay, we were talking high yeah. fashion. We were talking <laughs> gentlemanly cardigans. We were talking Barry Fry, and then we went on to Barry Fry. <laughs> All right, we'll leave another Barry Fry. Well, we're done, we say, we're we're saying congratulations, Man City. Like, well done, Man City. It's the best, we, we best, team, <laughs> best team I've ever seen in the Premier League. The thing is, I always expect to compete in Europe and in the league. Ronaldo's yeah, doing all right. A, yeah, Ronaldo, well, right, he, he, he got voted player of the season. Then he won it. He, he, well, yeah, he got voted there. He, so he won it. Was, he did. Outright. Oh, That's what I was saying. Yeah. He got voted. So what are you scoring so, him for? Because um, he didn't deserve to. And what grounds? Because Quagli Arella has done better than him at 36 years old. Quagli Arella is Serie A top goal scorer, 36 years old. The whole stadium gave him an apology. See, Quagli Arella has had a, a poetic season. Mm -hmm. And to finish the season at like 36, 37, top goal scorer, when Ronaldo has joined your league and you outscore him at that late of an age. Like imagine that, it's what a story. To be honest with you, I can't see why anyone wouldn't play Gareth Bale. A little bit of role play. We've never role played. You be a disgruntled Welsh footballer living in Madrid with hair. Right, okay, you've got the hair sorted. I will be a French legend mm. and former Galactico okay. who's just won three Champions Leagues. Champions League final. With an overhead kick. Yeah. How about that? It's a good goal, mine was better. You might have once been the world's most expensive footballer, but you're 29 and you're not as good as you think you are. Zinedine? Yeah. Three years left on a contract, Sunshine. Um, oh. Could play a bit of golf. This is my problem, see? This is why I'm leaving you on the bench, this attitude. If you'd come in and you were fighting for this team, you'd be a more, but you're not. Mm. Mm. You but content. if you need that. Can you just talk English to me? Okay, today, if I'd had a fourth substitute available to me, you still wouldn't have come on. That's harsh, but do you know what I can do with the £17 million on a three-year contract? Golf course. Golf course. Right there. I'm going to nine-iron you. So that was... That I'll got just, us a bit I'll just closer. play golf. That got us a bit closer, if you will. I think. If you right. will. And out and seen. Whose side do I take on this? Gareth yes. Bale. Okay. I think Gareth Bale should be playing a lot more for Real Madrid. They've had a poor season. Gareth Bale is far too good of a player to not be utilising properly. Vinicius Junior has been superb. Sensational. This and that's Sensational. Half the problem. But I do think that they deserve to treat Gareth Bale with a lot more respect than they have been.
if Spurs win this Champions League, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised to see Gareth Bale try and negotiate his way back to Spurs. Sit back and recognise the achievement of what uh, Leon ladies have done in the last seven days for ladies football. They've won their fourth consecutive Women's Champions League. How are they so gone? And they beat a very, very good Barcelona side. And they're, they're so dominant. Like they're so dominant on the European stage. They won it the year that it was here. And I believe they beat maybe PSG that year. But this is... Leon is showing what success can be on a women's female front and how big, much publicity it can get you. So it's sort of setting the tone. Yeah, they're doing being... very, very, very well. They're very dominant. They've got some amazing players. And I just thought we it would be wrong of us to not mention it. That mm. they, they've won Fair their enough. fourth consecutive Women's Champions League trophy. That is a massive, massive achievement. And more people need to recognise now that women's football is a, is a serious and competitive sport that needs to be paid attention to. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, very good. The quality of it is superb right now, and close to home. You know, with Car we've seen Cardiff Blue yeah. Bells firsthand. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the quality's really good. The, it's such a good level at the minute women's football. You know, and it's. I just want, yeah, just so, so yeah, just we'll, a, we'll just leave it there. Just out. a brief shout out, really. Those celebrations were something else, weren't they? Yeah, I think it was. It, it was a bit of a burn, to be honest with you, to have the the. <laughs> The comparison of Ajax winning to Man to, City, to Man winning. City's, I mean, again, completely. That's football oh, out of context, that was so to say the least. Funny. But whoever edited that did a fantastic job. Just the way that they've got Man City celebrating in front of just some people in, in the evening. Just like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Then they've yeah. done it a million times. Yeah, that's like, well uh, worth checking out. Yeah, and then Ajax have got. Was it 250,000 people, people lines the streets? Lining and the street. those are actual celebrations. I'm really, really, really happy for Dusan Tadic. Yeah. Really yeah. happy with him. Because he's just shown brilliant. his absolute class and he's put his potential right out there in, in the sphere. And Can those, I, what was, it, was it a double they won, yeah? Yeah, domestic double. Domestic Can I throw double. something out there about this Ajax squad? This, a different take on it now. Yes. Realistically, what Ajax should now be doing next season they've won a huge domestic double yeah reclaiming the league from PSV they should realistically now use this to springboard to be a huge dominant European force yeah but they can't do that because that's not the business model but are they going to do it not buy in just build and keep these players or are they actually going to become the next Monaco to Barcelona Nick, Barcelona seems very 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 strong and I think Arsenal would be a perfect fit for uh, Hakim Ziyech Hakim Ziyech perfect for Arsenal yeah. if those three go that's instantly like a brutal brutal like pillage I can see yeah, that yeah those three are huge like, they are the biggest I would suggest do you agree with the statement that Roy Keane said about the difference between players in De Ligt of Ajax, who's 19 and, and, and a captain in his club, mm. to that of Rashford and Lingard, who would want to be Instagrammers and start their own big, suggest... big things on the side? Do you agree with that way of thinking? Okay. I'll do, look, I'll just put two trains of thought out there for now. Yeah? I think you can send this up. When you look back over history, a lot of trains. I can, right, I can throw you two different types of player and they will fall in those two categories yeah where one is just a pull your socks up like James Milner and then one is Paul Pogba yeah mm -hmm. so they're two those two differences Roy Keane would definitely have been in the just professional we know he was players like Daniel Del Rossi he would be in that he didn't care about social media and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, I'd put Chiellini in that category I'd put Benucci in that category these players don't care about the celebrity side of football. They They're care changing about football. up the times. They change. They care about football. Gattuso would have been in that. Pirlo would have been in that. Um, on the other side of the coin, you got Jesse Lingard, you got Marcus Rashford, you got Paul Gascoigne. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like that style Those... of celebrity footballer, George. Brown, they're the two different styles of football. This is forgetting that football's moved on so much. Lingard and Rashford still get paid for be having the potential. One is one hundred twenty thousand a week, and then delicts on what? What do you think he's done? Rashford, yeah, I delict is probably on about 45, 50 grand a week, if that. Well, you, I mean, he could be on 20 grand a week. You don't know. You don't know what delict's on. I don't know what Ajax pay, really. But 
you're living in a world where the highest paid footballer in the Premier League is Alexis Sanchez. So that says a lot about money in football right now. We've been inundated again this week. Do you want to hear some feedback that we have this week? I would love to. Teribo West. He's been in chat, he's been on, and he said, I haven't been this excited since my hairdresser stopped green hair dye for the Andy Impey. He's uh he's annoyed is <laughs> Mr Impey because Tyrion Lannister didn't get given the throne. Um, I don't know what that's got to do with football. Tomori Kitspire. That was just noise. Just angry sound. Sound a bit like kicking. Asamoa Gian, he's been on. Um, Brett Emerton has been on and said, good day, folks. And the podcast is much better without Mitch. Bonza. Just want to say, though, Andy Impey yeah. was a collector of the, the football stickers in school. Really yeah, like them. All, yeah. Always had an Andy Impey. Always had you, mate. I had about big... twenty swapsies of you. He was a I was of over over you, but you he... did look cracking. Yeah, he looked a little bit small in that um, <laughs> in that Crystal Palace shirt. But <laughs> Andy uh, Impey, that is that. Thanks for getting Thank in touch. Thank you. Thank you. But I sort of like you and dislike you for the sticker thing. So that's it for another week. Um, thank you very much to everyone who's listened slash watched and or both. I've got two bits of information to give you this week. The first one is uh, tickets are still on sale for our July 10th live show. I thought they were sold out. No, July 10th tickets are still available for our live show and quiz. The June the 1st event that we are doing for the Champions League final um, is sold out. Uh, little man so stop trying to get tickets for that because they're gone Rabble this week um, we're talking at the Cardiff Podcast Club at Rabble Studios which is on Thursday the 30th um, starts at 6 o'clock we'll be there so come down and say hello Yeah, I need to get that angle. It's a GoPro on a, on a measuring joke. <laughs>